It looks like space is an abandoned, empty place without the slightest sign of another civilization like us. But does this mean the universe is absolutely silent and nobody except us has tried to explore it? Scientists' recent discoveries may prove otherwise. The farthest space probe, Voyager 1, has been traveling for almost 44 years now and still sends back data to Earth. And one day, scientists heard a shockingly strange cosmic hum. Even though the probe has already sent similar recordings in the past, the newly discovered signal was significantly different. For the first time in human history, we got the chance to explore what's hiding outside our solar system. The signal was found more than 14 billion miles from Earth. It was a sound that remained steady at 3 kHz for almost three years in a row. This has become the most stable and long-lasting hum ever detected by Voyager 1, and scientists were only able to discover it once the spacecraft got far enough. But where did this mystical sound come from? Most scientists believe the hum is a result of the plasma waves traveling somewhere in the depths of the universe. Now, plasma is a sort of major building material that nearly all cosmic objects consist of and emit. What's truly mind-blowing is that this sound stayed nearly the same, even after the probe flew for another billion miles. Such a level of consistency prompted other scientists to think there may be some source of energy causing this hum that we don't know about yet. But how is that possible if there's no sound in space? Well, it's true that sound fades away too fast in the vacuum of space since there aren't enough particles there for it to travel through. Even such sounds as black hole collisions or massive explosions of supernovas don't stand a chance. Here's a quick experiment. Put a tiny bell into a plastic bottle and screw the cap on. Now shake the bottle and listen to the bell. Now take off the lid, put two burning matches inside and quickly put the lid back on so they burn out. Once the air in the bottle cools, shake it again. Notice how the sound is quieter or is not there at all. Nevertheless, there are different electromagnetic waves that travel through a vacuum without problems, and radio waves are one of them. Although our human ears cannot spot such signals, scientists found a way to convert them into sounds. And now we can hear the message Voyager 1 sent us. So, how did Voyager 1 manage to gather such faint signals and send this data to Earth? Well, the spacecraft was designed with two hypersensitive antennas designed to detect plasma variations in space and record them. But even using radio signals for communication that travel at the speed of light, more than 20 hours have to pass to cover such a distance. The sad truth is that soon we won't receive any signal from Voyager 1. According to scientists, it's currently running out of power, so the probe's crucial instrument may function for three or four more years. Voyager has already done more than we've ever expected, and it could still surprise us with more life-changing discoveries throughout the following years. Even though the latest probe's finding is kind of a big deal, NASA has previously discovered some other weird sounds that puzzled scientists. In 2007, researchers unexpectedly came across something bizarre stored in a few years old data. What they revealed were so-called FRBs, fast radio bursts. These are so quick that each burst only lasts about a millisecond. From this point, researchers have started searching for other possible FRBs and they found tons of them. This is how these radio bursts sound. So far, it seems the more we find out about the universe, the more questions there arise. Could it be an attempt of an intelligent alien civilization reaching out to us? Or maybe this wasn't intended for our eyes and ears. Who knows? The majority of astrophysicists think these FRBs either come from black holes or massive neutron stars, probably the smallest yet some of the heaviest and densest stars out there. Other professors had a more thrilling idea of what was actually happening. Their theory is that these were powerful, misaimed alien radio signals that were intended to charge their light-driven cosmic ships at huge distances. 
What both sides do agree on is that these FRBs must come from an unimaginably distant source somewhere billions and billions of light years away from our galaxy. And while our technologies are limited to look that far, we seem to have harnessed our own solar system quite well compared to interstellar space. And NASA occasionally notices spooky sounds way closer within our planetary system. Let's take a look at Jupiter's moon Ganymede. Here's the disturbing sound it makes. The reality is that these sounds are as a result of chorus waves, coherent electromagnetic waves. Now, these waves frequently cause auras or polar light, and the Earth is not the only place you can see those. This breathtaking phenomenon happens on Saturn, Jupiter, and Ganymede as well. So, what you've just listened to could be basically a converted sound of polar lights on Ganymede. What about Mars, though? We've been studying it for quite a bit already, and NASA's Perseverance rover has just come across something fascinating. The first actual sound of the rover driving over Mars has been recorded. But what's interesting about it? Well, along with the noise of the metal wheels rolling on a rocky planet's surface, Perseverance has captured an unidentified high-pitched scratching sound. Here's the actual recording sent by Perseverance. Nobody knows what the cause of this scratching noise is, and while NASA's scientists try to get a clue, the mystery remains unsolved and leaves room for imagination. Scientific and technological progress do not stand still. In 2030, a prospective interstellar probe mission may take place. Scientists say this could be just as revolutionary as the very first attempt to land on the moon. Just imagine the largest rocket flying the highest possible speed to get 10 times farther than Voyager 1 got at the bare minimum. An expected lifespan for such a spacecraft is 50 plus years, but given Voyager's success and today's advanced technologies, everybody hopes to see this number rise. This would be humanity's first significant step into the realm of stars. The mission's primary objective is to capture our entire solar system from a huge distance and continue with the exploration of interstellar space. Once done, we will finally get closer to defining our place in the universe and unravelling the mystery of deep space. <laughs>